Hello all, in this particular tutorial, we will learn how to set up the Oracle Instance Client on Linux. Why do you need Instant Client? Instant Client allows, it's a very lightweight, it's a very small footprint software. It allows you to connect to your Oracle databases. And you know, it's not that if you install the Instance Client on Linux, you will not be able to connect to Oracle databases on Windows. It's the same driver. So you, if you install the Instance Client, it just allows you to connect your Oracle databases, which are hosted on Windows or which are hosted on Linux boxes. Now, Instant Client. So this is where this particular software you will probably install on your application server or on your remote server, which needs to access your Oracle database. Now, in this particular tutorial, I have used VirtualBox 6.1. The Red Hat version is 8.5. So we'll be using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.5 where our database is hosted. Also, the instance client is also will be installed on Red Hat 8.5. The database that we will be connecting is Oracle 19.3, the 19C database that we will be using to connect. So the database is hosted on 8.5. The instance client will also be on 8.5 and the database that it will connect is 19.c now the steps are pretty simple there are only four steps download install set up tns names.ora set up tns admin that's all so let me repeat download install set up tns names.ora set up tns admin these are the only four steps that are required for you to get running now we will be downloading actually two packages. One is the client, the basic package and the SQL plus package. So we will be downloading two packages and we will also install these two packages. Now, the TNS names.ora is a file which tells Oracle the host information, the port information, your SID, the service name where you want to connect and TNS admin will tell the client, the instant client where is your tns names.ora so it's it's as simple as that so let's get on with our exercise so as you can see i have a database for aura 19c which is running on db1 db2 this is the second server the db2 will act as a remote app server or application server or a client which needs to connect to the database hosted on db1 so on db2, on db2, this remote server, we will be installing the instant client. So we will be installing the instance client on db2, the remote application server. And once we have installed this, we will be connecting to our database hosted on db1 from db2 and we will test whether our connectivity works. So what you need to do is, as I mentioned before, you need to download two softwares, Oracle Instant Client and Oracle Instant Client SQL Plus package. So let's search for this. Let's search for this in the Google. Let's, let's say, we'll choose the RPM package. We'll choose the RPM package and we will choose the RPM package for SQL Plus. So let's choose this. It doesn't need any sign in, etc. You do not need Oracle account. So let's. This is done. Then you will choose the the RPM. Why we are choosing the OL8? Because this is this is done on Red Hat Enterprise 8. If you did this on Red Hat Enterprise 7, you will choose the 7. And you can use the zip. You can also use the zip packages. However, I'm using the RPM because that makes my life easier. So both of these packages are now downloaded. The SQL plus package and the basic package, the instant client basic package. Now that the softwares are downloaded, let's go to the second box, the second server. So let's go to the second server. So if I show you host name, CTL, you can see Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.5. If you see here, this is the DB2. The database is running on DB1. So this is my DB1, PS minus EF grep pmon let me clear the screen so this is db1 and my database is running on db1 and on db2 if i run this there is no database so we will from db2 we will be connecting to db1 from db2 we will be connecting to db1 now let's close this we do not need here and let's 
let's navigate to the location where I have kept my two RPM. So CD media SFD drive slash VM softwares slash Oracle LS minus L. You can see I got here two RPMs, the basic one and the SQL plus clear let me clear it and let me do ls minus l you can see the basic one and sql plus before before installing this let's check whether these two packages are actually installed so uh, rpm minus qa grep instant let's check if these are installed and as you can see that it doesn't give me any output now you cannot install sql plus without installing the basic the basic is needs to be installed first and then sql plus remember if you if you want to force this you can force it but it won't work so let's install the basic first so rpm minus i the instant client basic that's done and rpm minus i sql plus and that's done so we are we have completed the download and install of these two packages so now let's run rpm minus qa grep instant let's run this particular packages uh, sorry installation is completed and you can see here we did not get any output now we got it says that we have got instant sql plus and we got instant client basic installed so our installation is done now we are going to set up the tns names dot or our file Wherever you want to set it up, it's your choice. You want to create a separate directory. You can create a separate directory. If you want to set it up in the root directory. So currently I'm under the root directory. I can set it up here. Wherever you want to set, up, set it up, you can set it up. So let's create the TNS names aura. That's done. Add an entry for your Oracle database. I'm going to explain what is this. So I'm saying that my connection name is aura 19 c I'm connecting to a service name called Aura 19C, which is hosted on DB1. This is the IP of my DB1 and my database is listening on 1529. Let's save this particular file. Now we need to set a variable. We need to set a variable called TNS admin to tell the SQL client that this is where our TNS name dot Aura. So how do we do that? Export TNS admin equals slash root that's done and i'm telling you guys this is done our now we are at the step where we are going to test our connectivity and if all works fine we will be able to connect to our database let's do that so i'm going to say that and you can see from db2 i actually connected so if i say select host name from v dollar instance this particular database is running on db1 and from db2 i have successfully made a connection now what we what we'll do is like you know we will actually verify something so let's go to sql developer let's see if we have got a user call you we have a session called using the v dollar session do we have a user called fire connected so and you can see it doesn't give us any output let's create a user create user fire identified by water let's do that and just give him a dba right maybe you don't want to give him the dba but it makes my life easier so i'm going to give a dba right to user fire so that's done what i'm going to do now is from this remote location i'm going to connect to the to the sql plus as the fire user so how do i do that so i'm going to use this particular sequence so this is how i'm going to use that so sql plus so my username is fire i am the password of that fire is water and i'm going to connect to a database called aura 19 c and you can see i have successfully connected now let's verify whether my connection came in and if i now run this particular query you can see fire user has connected to my database and it has connected using from db2.db.com. So yes, the section connection has been made. And now let's verify if the fire is able to see my employee called rock. So we have one rock. Let's see if it is able to see. And you can. And 
and it cannot it actually is in the sys so it, yeah so by default by default it tried to pull the data from the uh from the uh from the uh user called fire so it it looked for a table called fire.oracle and it did not fire.employee and it did not find that particular table so what we need to do is we need to say select star from sys.employee and this time this should work so this one you should actually understand so the user who connected is fire and when i did not specify the schema it looked for a table called fire.employee and it said i do not have that particular table the table is sys.employee and hence now when i gave the schema name dot table name it worked so the fire user is able to see the records in my database and the fire user has connected to the database from db2 to the database hosted on db1 using the eastern client and the way we set up the eastern client there are actually four steps download install set up the tns names and set up the tns admin i hope this particular tutorial was useful i hope you learned something new if you learned something new do subscribe to my channel and hit the like button thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial bye bye